Hey! Hello everyone and welcome back to the walkthrough. I have no idea why I sat at this table all day doing nothing. But we're going back over here. We're gonna be doing some extra training before we go out into the world because we're not ready yet. Well, we're kind of ready because these are that difficult, but I still like to do the training just in case. So anyway... <laughs> So since we did step one, let's do step two. Step two, you say, let's head over to table two. I think you see where this pattern is going. <laughs> step two features the poison, sleep, paralysis, and confusion statuses. Make sure you think your actions over carefully during the duel. Retreating a Pokemon will cure any status ailments it currently has. However, you have to pay a retreat cost to do so. Since you're only training, put your normal deck away. Dang. <laughs> Again! <laughs> we use another one of the labs practice decks of this duel. Let's start the match using four prize cards! Step two deck. <laughs> yeah, you see his decks are kind of in numerical order too. No shuffle. Bad, no stop, no shuffle, bad. Don't you, no, okay. You're not shuffling, good. Alright. Let's see if we can destroy him this time. Hello there, war turtle of a new variety. Yes, it is from the special Squirtle intro deck. If it heads, depending on Pokemon is not paralyzed. It's similar to the base set Squirtle in that attack. Then there's a 30 Surf. Not not too bad, especially since it's got 70 HP overall. It reminds me a lot of Seeking, except it's got a paralysis attack. Anyway, I got two choices. A fish. And another fish, so <laughs> I'm thinking I'm thinking the Goldeen, because the Goldeen has more HP. So then we go flop on to the other flopper and plopper on the bencher. Four prize cards, let's -a go. You know, I really wonder if I should increase the speed of the text. Because that's a it's a really slow readout. <laughs> Alright, I play first! Woo! Let's get that car. All right, it's Ace of Spades. Let's plop that on the Goldeen. There really isn't much I can do here, is there? No. I mean, I can use the Switch card to switch for free. Uh, I didn't really. Well, I mean, obviously, I'm not going to use it now. But I mean, yeah, I, I didn't really. I didn't really describe the the switches or anything like that in the last part because I really didn't need to do switches. But yeah, see the retreat at the bottom there. That's a zero retreat cost. Other stuff has energy cards, typically, like see, Magikarp has the one retreat cost, that's also partly why I put in the Golding first, because if things go south, I can switch to the other fish. Anyway, let's just horn attack, and destroy that Grimer! Probably not, actually. Not, 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 not a 10 HP damage per attack. That, that's gonna take forever, isn't it? Oh, this is not good. Oh no! Oh no! Between turns! Every turn! Like, even between- like, from the opponent's turn to my turn, and my turn to the opponent's turn. 10 damage! That's a problem! So, hello there, full heal, but what we can do, actually, is, uh, do a retreat for free, the cure of the poison, go to the fish, go to the water energy, I could also use the full heal, to heal up the Goldeen if I wanted to, but as long as I don't have to, why would I? <laughs> Tackle does 10 damage for any single energy. Um, Flail does 10 times the number of damage counters a Magikarp has. Since it can only have a maximum of 3 before it gets KO'd, if you actually manage to get it at 20 HP, which uh, is kind of risky, you're only going to be doing 20 damage with this poor fish. But at the moment in time, it does as much as the Goldeen anyway, so... I might as well do the switcheroos as long as I can, you know? Alright, it's just going to do the poison gas attack again. And... We are in trouble once more, kinda. I mean, it's just taking 110 damage, but I could always just swap out again to prevent the 20 and the 30, you know, after the end of my turn. So, and here's another version of the Squirtle. I'm pretty sure I showed this Squirtle before. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. <laughs> just, it's the, uh, 
uh, starter dealio. Yeah. Anyway, Squirtle goes on there, and we're gonna go start powering up that bad boy because that's gonna be our ace this game. And we're gonna go retreat to continue the stalling out, and then we're gonna go and the whole and attack that the Grimer. I do believe you should be expecting a potion somewhere around here soon. <laughs> Just saying. Ah, oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah, I remember these duels pretty well. Anyway, sticky hands. 10 plus 20. And paralysis. So either or, if I had Magikarp or Goldeen out, it would have been uh, a KO if this attack hits, because they're already at 30 or below HP. If that, you know, if it actually hits at maximum power, so it, I figured Goldeen gave me the best shot, despite the sticky hands, but, well, all is well. So we're gonna play that War Turtle. We are going to, once again, get a reminder here, you got a Surf Attack for 30? It's got 30 HP left there, but, problem, we don't exactly have the, <laughs> the two water energy requirements. Hmm. Hmm. That could be a problem. But what we can do in the meantime is kind of set stuff up by... Oh, wait, it actually is, it is two water, right? Yeah, surf surfs two water. Yeah, I thought it was... I don't know why I thought for a second it was uh, water colorless, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna just gonna go pop a fire on Magikarp because I could still use its at regular attack. And... Oh, an attack to Nick further away at Grimer. And I'm hopefully explaining well enough in these earlier parts, like, the, the, the strategies of the game and whatnot, because then la in later parts, you'll know exactly what I'm doing while I'm zipping through menus and stuff. <laughs> Unless I have to explain things further, you know? So he's gonna power up Gloom on the bench. If only I had some energy removal. If only I had energy removal. Oh, Mayday! Mayday! <laughs> 30 damage. And paralysis, but the paralysis doesn't mean anything. I mean, it, it would if it wouldn't have knocked out Goldeen, but it did. Uh, paralysis would prevent me from attacking on my next turn unless I switched it out with a switch card or something. Uh, so now we're down one prize card. Oh no! Fish, save me! I'm just waiting for a water energy card. Oh, Charmander will help a little bit there. I guess I can plop that on there and put a fire over there. That'll work as well. There we go ahead and tackle. If uh, um, he only does 10 damage on the next turn, I'll be able to use Flail at full power if I had a water energy. And that's still not very powerful. <laughs> but chances are, 50%, it's gonna be a knockout! Oh no! <laughs> Yeah, that's kind of the issue with low HP critters like Magikarp, but ooh, if you can evolve Magikarp... Oh man, you will dominate the world! Alright, so we're, we're okay. And I think I will actually plop out the Charmander for now. Because it's got a cheap retreat cost, it can do the knockout, I don't really have any water energies anyway, and I'd like to save the war turtle for when I need it. Got it? Good. So let's scratch and end off our turn. I really needed to use the switch or full heals yet, have I? Just like in super. There we go! <laughs> this is like in being in a super trainer card conservation mode somehow. And yeah, now that we got that, it's it's probably game over. I would say. I'm gonna do 20 damage there, but um, if I actually attach any other energy to Charmander, I can also do the Ember attack, as you know, so... Oh! <laughs> um, maybe what I should do here is, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. <laughs> so, I mean, I got some good cards in my hand for the theme of the duel of, you know, switching and healing and stuff like that, but... Come on now, come on! Oh, that's a new type of Magmar I should probably show off. Um, you've seen Staryu before? It just got the slapper for 20. But I'll play that bad boy on the bench. I'll play a Magmar on the bench. What is this kind of Magmar, you might be asking? Yeah, one of those intro pack special cards never came 
to other countries. Fire Punch for 20, one Fire Energy, Smog 20, and if you get some poison with the head flips, that can do some extra damage per turn zones, but, uh, well, well, I, we're kind of, we, we, we kind of exhausted our, uh, energy per turn limit here, so I'm gonna go switch over to War Turtle, attack with that Surf, KO that Rotata, and have a good time grabbing another prize card, which is probably another Water Energy! Oh, look at that! <laughs> yeah, I think they're all Water Energy, if I remember correctly, because, you know, the no shuffle thing. I think it's just a way for them to continually allow you to stay powered up, basically. So we got a little poisoning going on here, that could be a slight problem, but not that big of a problem, really, because we have other options. For instance, I could switch back over to the Charman there, I could start slapping with the Staryu, I could start magmaring. Hmm, hmm, that sounds like a good idea with that Gloom being a Grass-type, doesn't it? So why don't I just go ahead and do that? <laughs> it takes two energy cards to retreat, but I think we're pretty good with the energy now, so we're gonna go and take advantage of our type advantage, and fire punch of double damage, and then he's gonna be like, oh no, sweats, sweats everywhere, mucho sueto. Got basic ghastly out on the field, though I can't really do much of anything, in all honesty. I mean, it's got... It could put you to sleep, but... It's gotta flip heads to put me to sleep, and then between turns... I flip a coin to wake up, and if I get heads, I wake up. So there's only a 25% chance that my Pokémon is gonna stay asleep. <laughs> so that's, that's not, not working in his favor there. Um... What is working in my favor, though, is I think I'm gonna go for the poison, because I have the powers to do so, and I think I'll get Starmie powered up on the side there, but if I get the poison, I'll be able to knock out that Ghastly. Now, the idea of Ghastly, though, is that it's... yeah, you can put it to sleep, but it can also Destiny Bond, so it's a double KO, but it was not able to set that up, so if I get the coin flip... There will be no destiny bond for you. <laughs> Cause I'll get the between turns poison damage. There we go. Oh yeah, I'm definitely gonna speed up the uh, text going on forward here after this game. Cause this is this is painfully slow. More water energy. All right. If I get another poison and he, oh, that's the same gloom. Oh right. Ooh, that means I win no matter what. If, unless he switches the gloom out for something, or he's able to cause some sort of status ailment that can cause me ire, that is not going to cause me ire. <laughs> I mean, it's gonna cause me 10 damage between turns, but, uh... Too late! I only got one price card left. Um, that Starmie, though, by the way, is actually not too bad of a card if I were to be- whoops, if I were to be playing it. Uh, I'll just actually, just for the- just for kicks, there you go, and I'll give it out a check. You gotta recover, discard one energy card, remove all damage counters, so it can be used to stall. But on top of that, it's got Star Freeze, you can paralyze per turn, so it's like a double stall. <laughs> not- not too shabby of a card there, but anyway. Oh, oh, um, I should also show you one more thing. Energy search. You can search your deck for any kind of basic energy card that you would like. So, fire or water in this case, because you really don't have other choices. But you can actually use this to take a look-see at your entire deck to see what the poop is in them. If you don't, if you're using, like, a pre-made deck and whatnot. So there is your deck list for the day. And I'm gonna grab a fire, because I got plenty of waters in my possession. Not that I really need to even grab anything, because I'm gonna win this turn anyway, I'm just, I don't know, I'm just messing around. Wait, why didn't I use the smog for fun to see if that would've, see if I'm gonna get a heads coin flip, I don't know, I just mash for the win, I just, <laughs> it doesn't much matter, because either or I win, because it's 20 times 2, but victory is mine! I, I did not play that, play the game intended me to play that, did I? I think they wanted me to full heal, but I planned that out so efficiently, that I just use switches to... <laughs> Alright! 
What do I get in the premiere pack? Take a gas. Take a gas, yeah. Oh no, it's not energy cards this time. <laughs> so we actually got some stuff that we could power up or make regular deck here with. Um, the, the stuff that you get in the booster packs are random, but they're set to a certain kind of random, like certain cards per set. Um, this my champ here. It's got the power of Strikes Back. If it takes damage, you do 10 damage to the attacking Pokémon, and can't be used when you could choose Sleep Paralyze. You know, any status ailment basically except Poison, and Seismic Toss is 60. It's not that bad of a card-ish, it just takes a lot of energy to get it powered up, so it's kind of on the slow side, and it also can't retreat very easily, as you've seen. I got a Professor Oak, and you know I'm gonna add that to my main deck. <laughs> Um, Hunter is a new one that you haven't seen. Well, you did see it in the first walkthrough, if you've seen that. Uh, put Sleep, and it does a Dream Eater. 25% <laughs> chance, good luck getting that off. Um, Porygon is like one of the most useless things. You could, you could change the defending Pokémon's weakness, but they could just switch between the turns to, to nullify that, and... The, you could change your resistance to the opponent's Pokémon if you'd like, but then they could just switch to a different type of Pokémon. It's 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 not a good stall Pokémon. Let me. Just <laughs> People used to put this card in their decks as a joke way back. <laughs> That's how bad it is. Dig Mudslap, you know that Diglets. Um, oh yeah, different kind of Meowth going on here. Bites. Yeah, it's a part of the intro series. Flip three coins, ten damage times the number of heads. It's not. Bad, it's 50 HP, and with the the triple coin flip there, you're probably gonna get 10 to 20 damage for two energy cards. So it's it's it, I mean it's it's more about the HP I would say than anything, but it's better than the Meowth that takes kind of like two <laughs> two energy cards I would say, even though it's the payday draw a card thing. Um, Tail Whip cannot attack. And next turn, if it actually works. And so it's a little bit of a stally thing, and you can do... It's it's sort of like the uh, Grimer attack. Uh, Krabby, Alper Family, get stuff on your bench, basically. Fill that up for a combo with Wigglytuff. I'll get more into Wigglytuff later. Iron Grip, pretty basic stuff. Uh, we, we've seen that. And Water Energy. Oh, next stage is even more challenging! Come back for more training whenever you're ready! Woohoo! But before that... <laughs> Message speed, please. Well, love of Arceus, faster. <laughs> I'm gonna show all the rest of them. By the way, you can also change the window color and stuff like that. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna change it periodically. So I'm gonna just leave it as red for now and make sure it's saved. All right. So now we're gonna see that text fly by. Whoa! Are you looking for some training men? A training regimen has many intensive stages. What stuff would you like to train on with me? Number three, please. Table three, and now we can really get through the duels a lot faster. Pokemon powers! Be prepared for anything when a Pokemon powers in play. That's sort of like my champ strikes back that I just explained. When combined with trainer cards, many different tactics are possible. We'll use another one of the labs practice decks for this duel. Let's start the match using four prize cards. Step three deck, of course. <laughs> no shuffling! <laughs> Alright. Since you didn't shuffle, we are good to go. Let's see what we have here. We got a fish, we got a turtle, we got a kangaroo. A kangaroo! This is a pretty good kangaroo. Like, I mean, it's it, it takes a while to get to that comet punch, but the thing that you're looking for is that fetch. Draw a card. Uh-huh! So even if the, op the opponent gets the knockout before you can retreat or attack with it or something like that, you're gonna draw a lot of cards by the time it knocks out this bad boy with 90 HP. So I'm gonna play Kangaskhan first, play our fish, play our turtle, and call it a turn. And uh, if you don't know that Blastoise, <laughs> um, let's just say that we've got an extremely, extremely powerful deck on our hands. The power of Blastoise, oops. The power of Blastoise is probably the most broken power in the entire game. You see, it's got Rain Dance. 
as long as it's a turn, and as many times as you want per turn, you may attach a water energy card to one of your water Pokémon. So, you can break the energy card rule of one per turn, as long as you're attaching water energy to water Pokémon. <laughs> Combine this with Professor Oak, Bill... Uh, <laughs> It's it's ridiculous, and on top of that, Hydro Pump, you can attach five energy cards to it in one turn <laughs> to to do 60 damage in a single turn. <laughs> but that's not all. You could do it Blastoise, because you can use it to power up other Pokémon to boot as well. But for now, I'm just going to focus on fetching cards, because I can't do any evolutions this turn anyway. Holy moly! <laughs> that's a good card! <laughs> But yeah, that, that Blastoise, is, it's its gonna be the end of his world. <laughs> and that, that double colorless energy is another kind of game-breaking card. It provides two colorless energy to any Pokémon that you attach it to, and it works especially well with stuff like Chansey, Charizard, um, Kangaskhan here, actually. But the thing about it is that it's another it's another turn breaking ho oh! <laughs> it's another turn breaking card in that you have the powers of speeding up your one energy per turn limit basically so we're gonna we're just gonna kind of keep fetching here really quick and before you know before we do the uh because I don't want to Professor Oak my Blastoise away, so I might as well just do it normally here. Yeah, but once I get the Blastoise, if I get the Blast- OH NO! That could be a problem. Um, Alakazam can move damage counters as much as it pleases, so it can use other Pokémon as a damage sponge to either heal it, or to stall out things to ridiculous levels. Um, Doing 60 damage to itself will also mean that it did 60 damage to basically his own his entire party, in a way, I guess you could say, because he's gonna move those damage counters around. Um But I've got Blastoise! <laughs> it's, it's, it's over! It's over! Uh let's see what we could do here. I could potion. Like, just for the fun of it. I mean, he's gonna knock out Kangaskhan on the next turn anyway after the damage the damage swap thing here. I, yeah, I'll give, you, I'll give you a little a closer examination to Alexam here. Uh, it's often if you like move your move your damage counters around to another Pokemon as long as you don't knock it out. Can't use unless it's got a status condition other than poison. And you can also confuse with the Confuse Ray. So it's got 80 HP and combined with that damage swap uh, and the, the Chansey, you can do a lot of stalling. With Al Alakazam because, well, it's got a lot of HP to just kind of stall things out. Like he's probably gonna move those damage counters onto this Chansey on his next turn. Uh, yeah, you seen this Chansey here? It's it's a beast. <laughs> uh, let's see here. I think it's time for the Professor Oak now that I've done the strategy explanations. And it's time to wreck everything. <laughs> oh no, I got another professor! Oh no! <laughs> and now he evolved into Gyarados. So he's now with the water energy power of Blastoise. We can instantly power up that Dragon Rage for 50 damage. Um, you can do the Bubble Beam, which can paralyze for that. But let's see what else we've got over here. Oh, let's just put this... Put that on there. Oh, let's just, let's just put another energy. Oh, let's put. Oh, let's put that down there. Why not? Oh, wait, we got another water energy. Let's put that on the Lapras. And oh, let's Professor Oak. <laughs> I, I think you get the idea of uh, what's going on here. Oh, I got this water energy. I'll use up the power up Lapras's water gun. Oh, and that doesn't count towards the. Oh, he got. Oh, that's okay. I already did. I was gonna say it doesn't count towards the one energy per turn limit. But uh, well, we're done. I got. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna go plop that on there, I guess. Uh, Pokemon Breeder, I could actually use to instantly evolve Squirtle to Blastoise as long as it could evolve. Wait, actually, oh, I should have actually shown that. Well, he's gonna knock out Kangaskhan anyway. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna show you here. I'm gonna stage your evolution card from your hand onto the matching basic Pokemon. Only can do it when that Pokemon can evolve. But anyway, I'm just gonna fetch. I, I think I've done enough damage this turn. <laughs> okay, I, I did enough setups here. 
Okay, here's where the damage swap comes in, as I was predicting. Like, just look at how much I was able to do that turn, just with the Blastoise and Professor Oak combo going on there. Uh, he's gonna do the double edge, knocks out Kangaskhan, and it's also gonna do 80 to that Chansey, but we're gonna we're gonna kinda save our Blastoise for its power and put out a la big fish. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna put the fighting energy on Hitmonchan. And we've also got that water energy, which we can also put on someone else. I think I think I'll actually plop it on Gyarados instead for the sake of paralysis in the future. Uh, put that Squirtle on the bench. Attack with the bubble beam just for kicks, because it'll knock out no matter which attack I use. That's what I didn't coin flip on the last game with the Magmar at the end of the tank. <laughs> Fighting energy. And here comes the Alakazam. He's gotta be sweating bullets right now. <laughs> he doesn't have any energy on the Alakazam. Oh, well, I got Dratini. Uh, and here comes the Pokemon Breeder. I just wanna show how this is used. You, just, you play that, choose your stage 2. Put the stage 2 on the critter that you can evolve it to. <laughs> Voila! I got two Blastoise. That's kind of a problem, actually, though, um, in all honesty, because if he forces me to switch through that Blastoise with a gust of wind, I can't attack with anything because I've been exhausting all my water resources, but... I, 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 don't, I don't really see this happening anytime soon. I'm gonna try Bubble Beaming here, because if I paral uh, get, cause paralysis, and I did, it'll prevent Alakazam from using its damage swap, and then it won't be able to heal itself, and then I'll just be able to knock it out on the next turn. So I am definitely taking advantage of that if I can, which I did. I'll power up that Itmon Chan. I'll do a Dragon Wire just to show you the attack animation. <laughs> and it's game over for that Alakazam. Here comes the Chansey. The Chansey has got the powers. I'm gonna power that. Oh, he's not power? Really? You're gonna just try and scrunch? I thought you were gonna just try and do a bunch of damage to Gyarados, even at the expense of your knockout, but I guess stalling that works. That scrunch attack prevents all damage on the next turn. Uh, it's two colorless energy. Oh, Dragonair! <laughs> um, Dragonair is the card that I was talking about before. It's It's got the slam attack. That's average. You're going to probably do 30 damage each time, which is iffy, but the thing that you want to use Dragonair for and combine it with double colorless energy. I'll show you the double colorless when we actually get into it later. Hyper Beam. The defending Pokemon has energy cards to attach to it. She's <laughs> discarded. <laughs> well, that's a turn killer if you've ever seen one. And yeah, it does cost four of the colorless energy, but. But. Well. Let's just say that. Uh, I, I, I think I can actually show the discard. Yeah, this is a double colorless energy. Uh, provides two colorless energy. It does not count as a basic energy card. So you can't search it with energy search. But if you draw it, you've basically accelerated your turns by one. So it's a very handy card to have for Pokemon that can actually utilize two uh, colorless energies for their attacks. And anyway, I don't have room to... <laughs> don't have room to evolve any sort of Dratini going on over here, so I think I'm just gonna just gonna end off my turn here. I was gonna actually gonna attack there, but I remembered- oh no, it's Scrunch, I can't- I mean, I could attack, but it won't do anything. Uh, let's see here- oh man! <laughs> oh man! Now, actually, if I had the- hello! <laughs> I actually do have one in my deck! <laughs> Uh, I was gonna say, if I had Dr uh, Dragonair on the bench, I could begin powering it up and then sap the energy cards from Chansey, even though that it's... Oh, wait, actually, no, no, wait, hold on. Doesn't that say all effects of attacks? Uh... uh oh, no, okay, other, other effects of attacks still happen, so I was right. I could sap the energy cards off of Chansey if I wanted to. Oh, and by the way, Chansey has one of the highest HPs in the game at 120. Uh, there's only a couple cards that have 120 HP, but anyway, I guess I could, just for the fun of it, um, <laughs> I suppose, I suppose, and then, I suppose, yeah, why don't I tr at least try Bubble Beam for Paralysis, even though it won't do any damage, it'll prevent Chansey from doing the scrunch on the next turn, that was just stupid on my part, not that I'm not in control already, but, 
Maybe I'm just too overconfident. Energy surge. Now, I wonder if I can show you here if I have another double colorless. Watch us. If I select that, please choose a basic energy card. See, it doesn't count as a basic energy, so we gotta choose water, fighting, fire, you know, all, all those other than the double colorless, um, well, I'll, I'll get into more of the non-basic energy cards, but for now, let's just grab a water energy because, well, we can, we can kinda attach a lot of those per turn, just saying here. Just kinda plop that on there, and then, uh, I think we're gonna go ahead and, uh, you have another bubble beam, just for fun. <laughs> I, don't, I mean, I could use, could use Dragon Rage, I wanted to see the coin flip results, doesn't matter anyway. Fighting energy, lots of those in the, the prize cards. It's kind of funny that they give me fighting energy when, when the, the strategy that I'm using is clearly Rain Dance. And I'm kind of just destroying everything with it. <laughs> Oh, jeez. With 100 HP Gyarados at 10 pound attack, is it going to take 10 turns and knock it out? That's not going to work in his favor. <laughs> um, what I probably should do is... Uh, wait, can I... Yeah, I don't really have anything that can benefit from the double colorless other than the Dragonair. I mean, I could attach the fighting, but what am I going to attach it to? Lapras. Oh, I, did, I, know, I never showed Lapras, did I? Uh, Lapras. Water gun. 10 damage for each water energy card attached to this Pokemon. I will not use a pay for this attack's energy cost. Well, 10 extra damage, excuse me. So I could do up 20 damage. So that's another strategy of Rain Dance is to power up Lapras, because Lapras is a pretty good basic Pokemon in that it has a lot of HP. Sort of like the Hitmonchan issue. <laughs> Uh, you can also confuse with the Confuse Ray, but yeah, 80 HP for the Lapras for a basic Pokemon. That's, uh, it's a pretty spicy meatball there, and we're gonna go try for the Paralysis, because either or is gonna take two attacks to knock out the Jinx, so I might as well just go for the Paralysis and see how it how it ends up. Ghastly Evolved into Haunter, that's Fossil Haunter, and that's a better Haunter than the other Haunter that we've seen earlier. It's also a lot rarer, but you'll see why when I, uh, when I give you a little... Uh, overview of that card in just a second here. And... It tried. It tried its very best. <laughs> it slapped me good, but the slap was not that powerful. So, transparency. It... Whenever an attack does anything, you can prevent all effects of that attack if you flip heads. That's the Pokémon power, so that's... That's pretty good right there. And then you've also got Nightmare, which automatically puts the Pokémon to sleep, which is a huge upgrade to the coin flip, because then it's a 50% chance that I wouldn't be able to attack on the next turn. So th if you're going to play any sort of Haunter, I would play this Haunter over the 50 Dream Eater Haunter, because chances are you're not going to get off that Dream Eater. Anyway. <laughs> uh, let's see, what else can we do here? We're kind of... We're kind of filling up on cards we can't use right now, so I'll just bubble beam and win the game anyway, so... <laughs> Woo! Alright! Victory is mine! I'm so sorry I used the Rain Dance strategy. I'm not that sorry. <laughs> Very good, Mint. You've cleared step three! Legends Booster Pack, and guess who we get inside it? It's Energy Card. No, it's not. We get. Whoa! A mu. <laughs> Holy. Whoa! Um, this is a special Mewtwo from what is called the Extended Series. Um, people also have dubbed this series the Vending Machine Series. See that symbol on the right side next to the star? Um, the reason why they call it the Vending Machine Series is because the cards came from a vending machine on the sheet that you would actually punch the cards out of. It was kind of weird, actually, because I think that you would like be able to damage cards very easily, but that is, that's a thing. <laughs> they existed and only existed in Japan. And, yeah, this is one of the cards. Mewtwo Psycrash does 10 damage for each Psychic Energy card attached to all of your opponent's Pokémon. That's kind of like an anti-Psychic deck card, in a way. Well, at least, I should say, anti-Psychic attack card. And then there's just Super Psy here, which is just the regular attacks, basically. It's, it's not a bad Pokémon overall, actually, because you could still do uh, the damage with the 50 and it's got a lot of HP to deal yeah, so it's, you're probably gonna get three energy cards on it before the energy, I mean, before the opponent will be able to knock it out. 
And I see energy removal down there. I'm a little excited about that one, getting to it. Um, revive, kind of an iffy, iffy card. See, if you got a basic Pokemon card in your discard pile, you can put it on your bench, but you, uh, you gotta put damage cards equal to half to HP and round it down. It's okay, I guess, if you really need a basic back, but chances are you're gonna have a lot of copies of basic Pokemon. You know? You know, it's it's not really one of the best cards. Uh, so you've seen that War Total. Oh, Pokemon say is an interesting card. Remove all damage counters from everything, but if a Pokemon has damage counters, you discard all the energy cards on them. You can combine that with Alakazam's Damage Swap to put damage counters on Pokemon which doesn't have energy cards. Play Pokemon Center and heal everything for free. That's a nice combo that you can pull off thusly. And here's this this card right here. Besides Professor Oak, this is probably the most broken card in the entire game. Choose one energy card attached to your opponent's Pokemon and discard it. Any of your opponent's Pokemon. So, like, you know how I said Dragonair had a pretty powerful Hyper Beam because it discarded energy cards attached to the active Pokemon that you were attacking? Well, this one you could choose anything. Imagine that. So you can, you knock stuff out, and you also offset your opponent's next turn on top of that by removing energy cards from your opponent's bench Pokemon. Or you can use this to stall out the opponent's attacks by removing their energy cards. You can also remove, say, a, a double colorless energy attached to an opponent's Pokemon, which sets them back for that entire double colorless. <laughs> This thing is so versatile, I, I do believe they banned it at one time. <laughs> uh, tentacle, Cowardice, uh, it's the Pokemon power, it's like Alakazam's, po well, like Pokemon powers are different than attacks, and that they have different abilities. You can return it to your hand, but you discard everything. It's not bad, I, I, I guess. It's, it can be used as sort of a stall card in a way, and you got a regular acid. But the thing about it is that it's 30 HP, so you can't stall that much with it. <laughs> it's just one of those things that was like an early game stall, I guess you could say. Uh, Jatini, very, very basic card. 40 HP, and one retreat, resistance to psychic, 10, uh, 10 damage pound, yada yada yada. Uh, Abra, another pretty basic card, although it's Probably a little bit more useful in that regard, because it, it also per paralyzed, but um, it's only got 30 HP, so it's a little bit more stally because of the paralysis sometimes, other times not, and <laughs> anyway, uh, this is another vending machine card, aka the extended series to be the more accurate title. Bone Toss, if it does 30 damage, it's like far-fetched. Leak Slap, if Tails, choose one of your opponent's bench Pokemon and do 10 damage to it, so it always does damage, but you don't know what it's going to do damage to, so it's kind of kind of like a double planning card to uh, keep into uh, keep in mind there, and basic psychic energy. Alright, step 3 is complete, step 4 lies ahead of me, you have to try it sooner or later if you want to get better, woohoo, I'm waiting! So about that step 4, um, watch us. Uh, Where's step four? What? Where's the? Where's the? Where's the? I don't know. <laughs> so in other words, we're done with our training for now. So with that, I'm gonna end off the part here. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next part when I start getting into the deck building and battling in the main game storyline and whatnot, it's gonna be epic. Not that it hasn't already been epic, but it's gonna be even more epic. Dang it.